All right. Shalom, 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 y'all. Shalom is Michael Israel. You are watching Spiritual Combat. I'm sorry. You are watching Ask the Elect <laughs> on Hold Fast Wednesday. And we have a very special show for you today. Um, as I promised, when I, uh, I, I did a show on Monday, um, and I, I had told y'all, I know Pastor told y'all today, we're going to uh, continue addressing uh, some of the stuff that's out there being talked about concerning um, uh, the departure of uh, Pastor Rufus from Straightway, and also some of the other things that we see being spoken about, you know, out there on uh, on social media and on the internet. Um, one of the things, one of the points I, I want to make here real fast, though, I want people to understand is is kind of uh, the vein <coughs> that we're coming from because, you know, I watch some of these videos that some of these guys do out here, and they're they're demanding an answer. We need to know why y'all did that, this, that, and the other. And what, what these people out here don't understand is straightway, we don't need to let you know anything. We function as a nation. We, uh, what you're going to find out here, and that's part of the purpose of what's been done here on this show. We, we function internally according to the word all this stuff that we're talking about today had been dealt with way before the feast and we were well on our way uh with our lives and everything like that you know what i'm saying yeah. this being rolled out as a uh service or a benefit to y'all but anyway with that said i'm i'm um hand it over to the uh, pastors to give an introduction and uh, and then we'll get into the show. Uh, I'm not going to Israel say the introduction. I guess we'll just start off. Um, we'll start off with a statement to go ahead and segue off into the show. So um, what we are dealing with today is that many people are lacking literal critical thinking skills. The skills to be able to discern, think, and to ask essential questions. Most people don't know how to discern when people are probing beneath the surface of things or flying under the radar of things. If you're going to pursue problematic areas of thought and you're going to be targeting um the quality and reasoning of certain things, you've got to use intellectual standards, spiritual discernment, and you've got to have the spirit of truth. So before we get started here, I want to bring something to our attention um, to the way that Yahshua dealt with things. Most of us have heard the Sermon on the Mount. But most of us don't know what the Sermon on the Mount was about. The Sermon on the Mount was about Yahshua, Jesus, literally blasting the scribes and Pharisees. And I mean setting them straight and flat out in order. That's what it was. Because, you see, Jesus and the scribes and Pharisees were on two different sides of the fence. And you know this as well as I do, the scribes and Pharisees were extremely hostile towards the Messiah and throughout his whole ministry. And so what we're watching, like I said in a video today, we're watching the same old car. And you have to understand, most people don't comprehend and understand that a lot of people are being driven because they are showing us who are informed, who are submitted to Satan at his will. And mind you, the world don't give a damn. The world don't give two nickels worth of rats ass for what's going on over here on the internet and religious, so-called religious people bickering and arguing the fight. They don't care. But religious people, 
like the modern day scribes and Pharisees. They do. And the one thing about Messiah with dealing with the modern day scribes and Pharisees He had them so peed off because he could perform miracles. They couldn't. He could do signs and wonders. They couldn't. He could do healings and deliverances. They couldn't. And so they did everything that they could possible to discredit him. And here's the old playbook of Satan right here. This is what he did. The people would brag about how, man, the Messiah, Jesus, he healed that person, or he healed that leper, he cleansed it, or he delivered that person, he cast demons out. Man, look what all he's doing. Wow. He's doing all his miracles, all these signs, all these wonders, great teachings, everything. Then all of a sudden, here come the religious people. Uh, yeah. But um, you didn't see him over there with the drunks. You didn't see that wine bibber over there hanging out with the, uh, you, you know, those low base people over there who are nothing but a bunch of drunks and alcoholics. You didn't see Jesus over there. I seen them over there with, with them people. Also, if he was so spiritual and so righteous from Yah, what was he doing over there letting that whore bow down at his feet, dropping tears on his feet and taking her hair? And, 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 and so-called wiping it up. What type of intimate crap is that? If he's really from y'all, what is going on? What is really going on? Ain't nothing new under the sun. It's the same old play out of the same old book that's been around. I tell you, we're not that difficult to comprehend or understand. Y'all knew that we were, we were so simple that all he had to do was write one book put all these experiences in and we can find ourselves in there. We can always find ourselves somewhere in that book. But the one thing that the Messiah did say was this, woe unto you, you scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites. For you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For you neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering in to go in. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you devour widows' houses, and for a pretense you make long prayers. Therefore you shall receive a greater condemnation. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites, for you compass sea and land to make one convert, one proselyte. And when he is made, you made him two for more the child of hell than yourselves. That's how the, the Messiah taught to the opposition of his day that opposed him as he was doing his father's will. And the Pharisees hated the fact that Jesus associated with sinners. Remember, he didn't come to call the righteous to repentance. He came to call sinners. And if you're going to call sinners to repent, then guess what? You got to be where the sinners are. So the king is good. Hallelujah. But we all got to learn that if you ain't in the place to be able to adjudicate matters, then you're not in that chain of command. That means it's none of your business. So we're not here tonight to answer the critics, the false prophets, the people who bear false witness, mean they're literal witness. And just because you get one person that gets out here and say something and been here once or twice, that don't mean that they're viable witnesses. But I can tell you what is a Bible witness. I heard a man to, um, today, somebody sent me a link about this guy by the name of LJ was talking in the ring. Oh, I can't bear witness to this. And I got many witnesses to this. I know that his wife had lupus. And I know that they left one feast. They came back after I had laid hands on her. And she came back with a green folder in her hand with paperwork from the doctor showing that she had a doctor's verification that she has been healed 100% completely of the disease of lupus. There's video out there on that. Now, all of a sudden, he said that we left straightway because of doctrinal issues. You know what them doctrinal issues is? 
because he no longer believes in Messiah and he believes that King David is the Messiah. Yeah. So where's the credibility in all this? And guess what? I wouldn't doubt if that lupus probably is done return because you're messing around with a very powerful ministry and a very powerful people that are anointed by the Most High Yah. And then let us remember Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, thou shalt condemn because this is the heritage of the children of the Most High Yah. And guess what? We are of him. So with that said, we'll go ahead and get started. With the show passes, y'all go in and give an introduction. Uh, let's hear it. That's cool. Hallelujah. Um, bless you well, Shepherd. I, I just, you know, I want to come on and say to all of our family, our true believers, uh, the ones that truly partake in the portion of Messiah. I want you to really understand this. This is a great time to be a part of our ministry because as the, the days continue to wind down, you find that the book rang true. You know, I'm just really looking at, you know, what is our position in all of this? You know, well, guess what? If you have been, you know, really paying attention, if you are really doing the real work, then you see that, you know, one of the things in Matthew 5, 11, says blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake and so this is what we find in people are doing people are saying all kind of false shit people are just coming out of the woodwork to just really see to it that they take down the work that is glaring this this work that's being done in this ministry is glaring. I guarantee you that. And you know, when I look at people, you know, most of these people have moved improperly. They have moved falsely. They moved as false witnesses. And I said, there is no way to chase all of these people down and try to prove to them what Christ has already proved to you. One, Christ proved to you when you fellowshiped with the saints. He, he showed who he was with. See, again, if y'all wasn't with us, y'all wouldn't do anything on behalf of his name through us because we would not be in position as vessels to represent what he is doing to make his own name great. And so when I look at that and I look at how many people just come in to say things, it, it's amazing. And I had to really find myself in the Thanksgiving of what Matthew chapter five was saying, we are blessed. And so there's no need to fall to the wayside. All this is what I want to leave with you. All your job should be right now is really taking great notice to everybody who has come out against the great work of the most high, because from this point on, it don't matter what they say. Believe me, y'all going to deal with each and every lying voice you're gonna deal with every tongue that have rolled, risen up against us in judgment Yah is gonna deal with all those who have put their hands with the wicked Yah is gonna deal with pastor rufus for staring up this false ass firestorm which you know you, you heard the testimony of brother vernon i mean it just don't get no clearer than that and, and what you find just like in the day of christ when Christ was getting ready to be persecuted, they didn't give, give a damn that Christ did not commit one sin. They wanted they wanted that work to stop and they wanted to see Christ burn because it, it did damage to their image and what they wanted to do. And so when we look at all these people, Ringo TV and everybody else that's coming out, you know, I've had people I had to delete off Facebook. And I'm just glad because we, we know we stand. I didn't need you. You didn't need me. And so I'm just glad where Yah has us because I am looking forward to the even greater and mightier works. Yah's going to work through that man right there, Pastor Charles Dow, and all of us who are following him as he followed Christ. I'm, I'm excited, Shepherd. I'm excited for what you're doing. 
I know you, I see you, you, your, your work and your evidence have not changed because there's no way you have all of these eyewitnesses that are seeing the things that are taking place here. You're, there's no way we had all these eyewitnesses witness, even on the day of testimonies, y'all show up even in that day. And so it's just greater things that's going on. And all you all don't lose heart, stand still and know that he's y'all and watch what he do. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to this. I've been here before and I, I'm thankful that I'm, I'm here in the midst watching these folks rise up against a small group of people that I know is loving y'all with all their heart, all their might, and all their soul, Israel. Y'all y'all stay stay to the grind. Go to it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless all y'all, Israel. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Hey, I'm gonna keep mine very short and sweet. Uh <laughs> both pastors have explained it extremely well, which is and Pastor did a video about staying focused. Staying focused, okay? Because if you don't see, when you when you see all of this mess, all of these talking heads, it can become very uh, distracting if you allow it. And it can waste a lot of time if you allow it. And what is really taking place, what's really occurring is, it's trying to distract you from doing the work that y'all called you to do. It's trying to distract you from keeping your hands on the plow. We have to remember that we have an adversary and he will go to great lengths to see you knocked off course, no matter what it is. And we all need to understand the daytime and hour that we live in. The daytime and hour, that time and hour that we live in is so anti-scripture because especially when it's dealing with any transgression, especially when it's dealing with transgression that causes you to have to separate Okay, which is basically the same thing as death. Okay, nobody wants to diligently search out a matter like our word tells us, like the most high word that he's given to us tells us to do. But the generation that we live in, it's whoever reports something first. Okay, whoever puts something out first, no matter if it's true, no matter if it has any truth to it, that's what people are going to take and they're going to run with it. And then whoever can put out something first with great volume. So they're loud and they put the most information out that they can. And that's what people are going to take and that's what people are going to run with. And when you even see in all of this that is come to pass, again, just like Pastor Corey was saying, this is an exciting time. And the reason why it's an exciting time, because, again, if y'all can't clearly see that we are living the book right in front of us. Mm -hmm. Just look how fast all of the enemies of Pastor Dow have popped up. Folk that we've never seen before. Folk that we've never laid eyes on. I mean, everybody is keynote experts on the way we live and how we function. But here's the thing, as we know, None of them laid eyes. None of them ever put their hands to the plow. And then the ones that, the very few that say they have any type of eyewitness account or whatever, you see that they've left the scrubber. All I know is this, y'all. Pay attention to fruit. Y'all hear this in this ministry constantly. Pay attention to fruit. And when you pay attention to fruit, it will show you who y'all is with and who y'all is not with. It will clearly show you. So again, this is exciting time to be around. It's unfortunate that it comes with people slandering and gossiping and leaving and doing all type of things and painting pictures. But you know what? The book says, save yourself from this untoward generation. It, this all, this whole situation, what it should have did, and continue to do is make us focus even all the more so and rejoice even when folks slander your name they gossip they throw your name in the mud they do all of these things they threaten you just rejoice not saying don't be sober-minded and keen but at the same token rejoice rejoice so hey i'm looking forward to 
this show. Bless all y'all. Bless Ryan, Michael, Israel. All right. So um, one of the things we're going to do is just um, we're going to be uh, going through some time stamps on uh, on a video. Um, and, you know, we're going to just show you how people will twist things to, uh, you know, to make uh, the light shine on them, to make themselves appear a certain way. But uh, as, as you heard some of the pastors say, one of the big things that we keep um, trying to uh, impress upon you is the importance of witnesses uh, and not bearing false witness, um, credible witnesses. You see what I'm saying? Uh, you got to consider all that. Um, all right. So what we're going to do, uh, we got a video. Umbri, uh, if you bring up the video, go to the 2450, uh, 24 minute and 55 second mark. We're going to go into the video a little bit. And just to paint the premise of what this video is, is this is a video that uh, Pastor did online. Um, I, I, basically what he does is he, he's a, 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 he goes on these, uh, basketball, uh, vlogs and they talk basketball. Okay. Um, and on this particular one, he, he for a, almost an hour, he went in, in front of them about the situation that happened here at Straightway with him. Uh, we're going to go through a lot of it. Um, the reason we're starting at this point is because it, it kind of, the topic, what he's talking about, uh, kind of sets the base for everything else. Uh, so, Umbri, if you're there, go ahead and play it. Y'all let me know in the comments uh, if the audio's good on it. Go ahead, Umbri. Disruptor. The way they didn't do the process right is because you we have an ecclesiastical council for anything that goes on. We had people in the council. One rule we have is nobody gets added unless they have teeth in the game. Pastor Dow kept adding people to benefit him that had no teeth. All they heard was him explaining to them what was going on. When I requested that the rest of the elders and, and leaders get involved, he declined it. Then, like the book says, go to your brother. I did that in December. When it said go back to him with a few people, that's what took place in Wisconsin in the meeting where the yelling took place, right? So the next step should have been going before the leadership and before the before the whole assembly. He would never let that happen. Then he manipulated the scriptures in front of everybody and tried to tell people that I was presumptuous in thinking that I could go to him and tell him about the spirit he had. And anybody that's presumptuous is supposed to be cut off from the thing. That's number 1530 for you people that are scholars that read the book. But at the end of the day, go read verse 22 and read it all the way down to the end of the chapter. You will see, I don't qualify for that. This is a man purposely breaking Yah's laws, which is breaking the Shabbat. He did it on purpose. He knew he wasn't supposed to, and he did it anyway. He was being presumptuous on purpose. I wasn't. And I didn't break any laws because there's no law to say you can't disrespect Pastor Dow. There's no law to say you can't raise your voice at your brother. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I didn't break any laws of the Most High Yah. So what they did was Pastor Dow was so offended, he used that and manipulated the leaders and the ones that was on his side, and manipulated them to agree to put me out. Now, again, here's the funny thing. None of them ever agreed to put me out. Don't time nobody out. No time and nobody out. Yeah. None of them ever agreed to put me out. So Pastor Dow trumped them and did it himself. That's when you saw the video on Patreon that said there's no longer straightway Georgia. Then the next day, that was Thursday. The next day, Friday, is when you saw him on Blog Talk on YouTube talking about the whole thing for two hours. Then he gets offended with me. Now, mind you, those are two online platforms, Patreon and <laughs> YouTube. Anybody can see those, right? He gets mad at me the next day on Saturday, Shabbat, after Shabbat, when me and Elder Brent decide, we're going to do a video and tell our side, because Elder Brent was part of the Ecclesiastical Council, who did not agree, 
who saw Pastor Dow railroading me, who saw that evil spirit that I saw in Pastor Dow. He saw it and said, I'm not going to be a part of this witness. And he left. Now, he had a community up in Cleveland, Tennessee <coughs> that had 15 people on it already. Three or four families, 15, 16 people. So he dissolved his community over this. But again, sometimes you got to make a stand. And again, Pastor Dow can say what he wants. At the end of the day, he didn't follow the book. The book, even in that uh, Numbers 15, even in that account, what they try to use, verse 30, and say was presumptuous. If you read down, the whole process was the leaders going to, to Yah, going to God and asking him, what do we do with this man that broke your law? And God said, kill him. And the whole assembly picked up a stone and killed this man. I never even got a chance to go before the whole assembly. Because Pastor Dow knew no way in hell the assembly was going to agree to that. No way in hell. You're offended, Pastor Dow. You keep telling the people, I'm offended, but it's clearly you're the one offended. And you abuse your power by putting me out. And again, he could have been a man that just came to me and said, I don't want fellowship with you no more, nigga. And guess what I would have done? Left. It wouldn't have had to be all this. Then he's saying, he's running to YouTube. No, 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 brother. Go back and look. You did a YouTube for two hours on Friday called Blog Talk. Telling the whole story. You start the online shit. Then, by not letting me go before the people, what else, what other, what other avenue do I have to put the story out there? So that's that's how it is. And people say, well, you just honored him, disrespect him. And guess what I say to them? Okay, that's your opinion. There were six men in that room, three pastors, three elders, right? Two of the pastors are going at each other, me and Pastor Dad. That left four other men. Two men were offended by how I talked to pastor, but two men weren't. So which side do we go with? You understand what I'm saying? It's words. It's men talking to men, right? And at the end of the day, I was right. I told him he had a spirit. Anybody that knows spiritual things can look and see Pastor Dow's under a spirit. That man said he hope I'm a vagabond. Y'all go look at what vagabond means. Mind you, I'm, I'm a man with wives and children. He wants me to be a vagabond. I, I can't. I ain't even. Can you explain to the people what that is. A vagabond is a man that has no home and wanders around for the rest of his life. In a nutshell, that's what he we, hopes on. We got a lot to answer here, man. We're gonna let it run that long. That's, that's a lot to answer. Yeah, go ahead. All right. Well, hey, I'll let Pastor Beer go ahead and start off with it. Hallelujah. <laughs> All right, man. Okay, that's a lot. But we'll go through it. We're going to break it down in key. I'm waiting on a piece of paper that just arrived. I want to make sure I, I'm, I'm writing down key points. All right. And while, so, and while Pastor's doing that, um, let's do a backdrop here while you're getting his notes together. First of all, number one, the whole purpose and reason why that we were even coming together for this meeting is because Pastor Rufus and Elder Crago, two weeks prior to the meeting in Wisconsin, had got had a meeting with Brother Robert there in Straightway, Georgia East, and said that they was going to get this spirit that was in Pastor Dow. Uh, once they got to the meeting, Elder Crago act like he didn't have any conversation whatsoever at all with Pastor Rufus. Pastor Rufus act like he didn't have no conversation. Pastor Rufus was speaking with Elder Crago. Elder Doug and Elder Mitchell, all of them behind the scenes. So we're at this meeting because Pastor Rufus says that he, I have a spirit on me and he's going to get that spirit. I get to the meeting and I'm like, okay, we're here and why are we here? And the next thing you know, we started going in. They started going in on this particular meeting right here and um, come to find out I'm being accused of a bunch of stuff out of which none of it stuck. Um, earlier before this part of the video that you heard being played, uh, he said that he was speaking to me in such a manner that I was kowtowing down and cowering down inside the meeting up there. So before I go any farther, is that true, Pastor Mir? That's, that's very true. Uh, did I kowtow down? Did I run? Uh, did, did I not um, uh, speak back forcibly to him? Absolutely. Those are flat out lies. 
and he's very good. At, he's very good at doing that. And you know, if you ever pay attention to people, especially when they lying, a lot of people do certain things. A lot of times, people may scratch their head. They may look. They may look uh, up in the air. But a lot of times, people laugh too. And that's one thing you can notice about Pat Rubens. Anytime he's giggling when he's speaking, he's usually lying. It's very easy to dissect. Okay. But I'm going to go to straight, straight up facts because somebody can say I'm assuming that. Okay. Now, he also said that that is our opinion in that recording. Okay. That he was rude in the way he spoke and disrespectful to pass it down. Funny thing is, though, is he already admitted that he was rude and he shouldn't have spoke to pass it down that way. And that he was presumptuous. It's amazing that he, Again, he in this recording said they said I was presumptuous and tried to use numbers 1530, which Pastor Corey broke down perfect in that meeting. But the thing that gets me about Pastor Rufus is, and, and see, this is why it's very keen that you always got to listen to what people say. He used to make this statement all the time. He used to make the statement that I read this, I would read the Psalms and the Proverbs, and that's what taught me the law of Yah. He said, I read the Psalms and the Proverbs. That taught me the law. He would make that statement all the time. And again, here's the point. He is the one in his video that said he was presumptuous. Okay? Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to read what David said. This is Psalm uh, chapter 19. Okay? And this is verse 12. Look at what he says here. Who can understand his errors? That's the question he's asking. He says, cleanse thou me from secret faults. Keep back thy servant from, he says, keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Mm. This is what the book say. Mm. He admitted that he was presumptuous. Now, I know what he'll do. He turned around and he said, well, you said I was presumptuous, and yeah, I did say that in the video that I was presumptuous, but tell me why I sinned. Well, what's a presumptuous person? Mm. A presumptuous person is a daring person. Mm. A presumptuous person is one who tempts. And it's amazing that the Messiah said that thou shalt not tempt Yahweh thy Elohim. Well, Pastor Dow is not Yah. Correct, he's not. But guess what? You, out of your own mouth, have said several times that this is the man of Yah in this generation. So when you get rebuked and you get reproved, it's okay for you to jump up and rise up and speak to somebody any way that you feel. And the thing is, is even what you thinking that you rebuked and reproved, that came off an assumption. Because as I have stated before, Pastor Dow, I guarantee if any one of the leaders would have called him and said, are you speaking about me in these great reset videos? Pastor Dow would have answered yes. Want to know why? Because he said, I'm talking to the leaders straight down. So when you have all this assumption that everything is pertaining to you, everything is pertaining to you, you don't understand by you being presumptuous, again, by what you admitted, the book right here, in which you say you learn the law from, tells you that you are in a great transgression. I just read it. Mm -hmm. Now, he just went on there as well, and he said the whole, and, and, and I've done this, and I'm going to do it again, and I'm going to do it briefly. He said uh, how he first came to Pastor Dow. Then he said, second, he brought witnesses, and that was what the meeting was with in Wisconsin. And you notice how fast he spoke over that, right? Again, y'all need to, number one, get this word in your heart. Because when you get this word in your heart, you'll be able to simply look through and pay attention to what people say. And I remember when we used to play football, they said, when you study the playbook, the game will slow down for you. It doesn't matter how much your opponent wants to go on a hurry-up offense and go fast. 
and throw a bunch of things at you. But what will happen when you study the playbook is the game will slow down for you, no matter what they do. So when he's talking fast, if you, this word is in your heart, it will slow down exactly what he said, mm -hmm. and you'll be able to dissect it. So again, he has said it over and over and over since this he since he started this entire thing. He said, "I came to Pastor Dow, and he's asked Pastor Dow if he was speaking about him." Pastor Dow said, "Yes." He said, I think if you just get out there, you'll motivate your brothers a little bit more. And then he said at the end of the conversation, Pastor Dow said, thank you. This was a good conversation, right? So he said that was the first time he went to him. Okay, so now let's see what the book says. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. Mm -hmm. If he shall hear thee, thou shalt have gained thy brother. Okay, so... Where did Pastor Rufus ever go to Pastor Dow and tell him, Pastor Dow, you have trespassed against me? Never, not one time. Where did he ever go to Pastor Dow and say, Pastor Dow, I have a fault against you? Never, not one. So guess what? With the Matthew 18 that he keeps trying to use, he already failed step one. Then he said step two. Mind you, over and over and over and over, if y'all are listening, he told y'all, he knew nothing about the meeting in Wisconsin. He said he learned about it one hour prior. So how can you go to step two? Step two says, but if he will not hear thee, but if he will not hear thee, you said, he said, at the end of the conversation, Pastor Dow said, that was a good conversation. I'm, think, I'm glad you called me. So how didn't he hear you? You see the lies and the rhetoric? And then again, if you know the instruction manual, the game will slow down for you. The playbook, the game will slow down for you. Look at what he said here again. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. <coughs> okay. So let's understand something. He failed step one, and then he told us repeatedly he knew nothing about this meeting until hour two. But then he gets on a sports talk show. Again, sports talk show, and he tells you that he already did step two by bringing other people to come to the meeting. So who's lying? Well, we found out at the feast from another brother that he already had this plan from a long time ago. So did he bring a brother? Did he, did he already inform them? If he's already informed them about step two that you said you took, guess what? Everything you have after that is thrown out the window because you didn't do step one. And you didn't do step two either. So how in the world can you then try to pull your same tactics that you've been pulling, which is you being a bully over all of the saints as much as possible and seeing plenty of people that are out here that you have spoken so harshly to that's not in the faith no more. How can you try to now demand and command step three? And not only did you want to demand and command step three, you wanted to do it at the feast of the Most High Yah, unleavened bread, which is the Passover. The nerve of this presumptuous, daring, wicked spirit. You see, this is almost laughable when this word is hidden in your heart. Again, get the book in your heart. And I'll address the last thing, the whole vagabond comment that everybody seems to be running with. Again, Y'all weren't in these meetings. Y'all didn't understand that the first person, the first person that spoke up about finding a place for his family to live was Pastor Dow. He was the first person, Pastor, Pastor Dow. Am I, am I telling the truth? Oh, you're telling the truth. Matter of fact, I've got a place down there, Straightway, uh, Georgia East. It's a, a double wide three bedroom trailer plus with also a travel trailer down there that I actually uh, said that would be a place that he could actually, him and his family could actually go. There you go. And Pastor Corey, you were on that call. Was he not the first one trying to find somewhere for him to live? Absolutely. Yes, he was. Okay, so Y'all see that? That's one witness. That's two witnesses. Guess what? That word is established right there. 
and there were other witnesses on that phone, including the elder that told him that standing by him in the video of which they said they wasn't going to go on the internet about mm -hmm. the next day. And guess what that elder said when we started to talk about places where he could live? He said nothing. So the wicked pastor that he called me, mm -hmm. the wicked pastor he called Pastor Dow, mm -hmm. the wicked pastor that he called Pastor Corey, and all the other men besides one that he says is staying around him, we're trying to find a place for him to go, his family to go, and his family to live. Mm -hmm. But the one that is now on the right side of him in the video said nothing. He was mute the entire time. So y'all can run with the vagabond comment. Y'all can run with him saying that Pastor Dow cowered down to him in the meeting, which is a lie. Y'all can run with him trying to use Matthew 18. He can't use Matthew 18. He didn't follow step one or two. And guess what? Again, he is presumptuous. And the reason being is this, y'all. The reason why we're talking about this, especially this presumptuous spirit, is especially with men, you must guard yourself against it. Because a presumptuous person is a prideful person. Mm -hmm. A presumptuous person has no humility whatsoever. Mm -hmm. A presumptuous person is an extremely daring person that is willing in that spirit to tempt not only his brothers and sisters, but even Yah himself. Y'all better understand what y'all dealing with. Bless y'all. And he also made a statement early on in that recording right there that um, I was the one that added all of these other pastors and elders to this particular group right here. That's not true. As a matter of fact, um, I sent a private message to the five or the six people that were involved up there in Wisconsin. He took that same message and he he blasted it out and bought it to all the other pastors and elders in there. He was the one that actually bought them in. And then he plays the card and try to wonder, how did they get in? Am I telling the truth, Pastor Mir? Absolutely the truth. And not only did he blast it, the text came like 1130 in the night, as well as this text that he texted me two nights ago at 3.04 a.m. Boy, I tell you, the book said that the, 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 the wicked get no rest, don't it? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. At 3.04 a.m. And the one that pastor's talking about came at 11.30 in the evening to where my, the de my deacon come up says, wondering what this is. So we're going to go ahead and address uh, briefly here, Numbers chapter 15, he said in verse 22. First of all, the context of Numbers 15 to verse 22 to 29, these are laws about people who are doing unintentional sins. That's the reason why you can read the Most High Jah instruction in there. But when you get to verse 30, it puts a but. It says, but. That means he's getting ready to change something here. But the soul that doeth all presumptuously, this is not someone that's unintentionally sinning. This is someone who is rising up. This is someone that is lofty. This is someone who is exalted, kind of like Coral, Dathan, and Abiram. But the soul that doeth all presumptuously, whether he be born in the land or stranger, the same reproach of Yahweh. And that soul shall be cut off from among the people because he have despised the word of Yahweh and have broken his commandment, that soul shall utterly be cut off. His iniquity shall be upon him. So when Pastor Mira read Psalms earlier, it talked about presumptuous sins, iniquity, sins. So that right there is the first order of business. Now, it's easy for somebody to get up here and say whatever they want because all you have is just their side of it. Even Elder Crago and all the rest of them that was there, everybody was there and know good and well that Pastor Dow is not going to have no man sitting up there screaming and shouting at him and you're not going to get a return fire. That is a fact. That just didn't happen like this. So I don't know what type of picture that he's trying to paint to the court of public opinion to, to persuade and sway the minds of the people. But whatever it is, it's wrong. So Elder Brick Craig will say we didn't follow the book. Well, this is what happened. We were planning on going 
to straightway Georgia on a first day. We had already had two or three weeks where these pastors, Pastor Corey lives six hours away. Pastor Muir lives six hours away. And, and all of elders, um, two hours, three hours, four hours away. We're doing this every single weekend, all because he has an alt or offense against me that I didn't even know about. Didn't even know about. And all of a sudden, I become the target of this, whatever this spirit is, which still today can't nobody name. Nobody's found out what it is. But one thing about all the elders and pastors, after much scrutiny, they found out that he was the one. Every finger that he put forth, every finger that he pointed, he was the one that was guilty of what he's trying to nefariously charge me with. So we were planning on going to Georgia. All of us. Um, Elder Mitchell told him we were coming down. He said, for what? He said, well, we still got to finish adjudicating these matters because we didn't finish. He said, oh, no, you aren't. We're not going to have that wicked man, Pastor Corey, that wicked man, Pastor Muir, that wicked elder, Elder Miguel, and that other wicked elder, Elder Rob. They better not come down here because if they come down here and they step foot on my land, that's what he said. My land, I will call the law for the lawless. I said, oh, you made it easy for me then. You made it real easy for me. So I said at that point, guess what? If those righteous men, which you sit up in front of hours and spoke to, if they can't come down there to the land that we thought to be the land of the saints, then guess what? You can't come up here the straight way. We don't play games like that. If the Israelites are not welcome to that land, you ain't welcome to this land. And that's how Pastor Rufus got excommunicated, excommunicado from the ministry. All right. You have another time stamp we need to go on to? Yeah. So what we're going to do now, um, we're going to go uh, briefly to the, uh, we're going to go to the 11 minute and seven seconds mark and um some of the, some of this you already covered so it's going to back up with uh what was already said but then uh there's some additional on the end so this we're going to listen to about two minutes of this okay so i'll i'll let y'all know um but uh when you get to it you go ahead and play give a shit where he says that See, he talk all that shit, but see, people forget I've been face to face with him. You should have saw him cowering in that meeting when I start coming at his ass. The thing he got so offended. I can't believe you're talking to me this way. Who the hell is also, you? Also, you were like aggressive because what they were yeah. trying to say, because what, yeah. what the, um... Now, hold on, Queen. There's a, hold on, there's a difference. There's a difference. Respectful. There's a difference. I wasn't aggressive, like fighting, but I was loud like a man. I was talking like a man. Now, I didn't curse him. I didn't use, uh, you know, I don't even use vulgar language, you know, like the F-bombs, Bs. I don't use that stuff. So I didn't do any of that, but I did call him a liar because he was lying. I did tell him he had a devil because he's full of a devil, as you can see. I said all that stuff. And he comes, oh, 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 oh I can't believe you're talking to me like that. Nigga, who's you? you? You're just a man at the end of the day. You ain't nobody special. I mean, again, you passed it down, but that's it. That's it. You act like I'm talking to Jesus. And I wouldn't talk to Jesus like this. Because Jesus wouldn't be full of this spirit that you're full of. I really was talking to that spirit. But he got so offended how I talked to him. And then he started this whole plan to get rid of me. And then he got them dumbass numb nuts over there to agree with him. Mm. You know what I'm saying? He got them because, again, they had they had hatred and jealousy in their heart. What Pastor Dow saw was that I was a viable threat to him for no reason at all. Now, listen to what I'm saying, y'all. He saw me as a threat for no reason because I wasn't. I was trying to lead by example. He saw the level of love that people were showing me, especially when he made me a pastor. He saw the level of love and he looked at it. It was the same like King Saul with David, bro. When them people came out in the streets singing for King David and said, Saul has killed his thousands, but David is 10,000. Man, that shit went to the king's head. Like, what the hell? He got the people singing for him? What's next, the kingdom? And that's what he thought. All right. All right. Well, so we'll go back and address this again. Pastor, 
Uh, when we were in that, well, he said I was cowering down, but you were there at the meeting. When we were in that shouting match, um, and that means it was going back and forth, um, I remember what you said. You said, what are we doing? You remember that? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Okay. So now people have to understand that Elder Rufus, Pastor Rufus, has been my greatest rah-rah cheerleader, whatever you want to call it. Multiple times he has stated, you cannot tell me nothing about Pastor Dow. Nobody has ever, at least with their lips, has ever supported me with their lips like Pastor or Elder Rufus has over the years. Nobody has. And um, he was the one that gave my sons the designation of Prince. He is the one that continues to keep even privately, even telling Pastor Miriam at the feast, the last feast we was, you cannot tell me nothing about Pastor Dow. You know the reason why? Because when they didn't have a place to go, Pastor Dow and the ministry of Straightway provided it for him and the saints. When they had nowhere to go, we provided it for them. And that's just a statement of fact. We gave them a, some land and a place to go. So, and my statement at that time was, you don't have to ever worry about being put out on the street by the heathen again because somebody wants to raise the rent for you. Now, all these people out there that are so-called for all these other people, I, I, I don't know how much more just, how much more honest, and how much more true than you can actually be than, than what we are right here tonight. Pastor Mirror, see, we're still in, in, in to the point where Pastor Corey has come into this just yet. Pastor Mirror. This, <laughs> this is Showtime at the Apollo or, 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 <laughs> or Comedy Central or something, man. <laughs> because this is funny. Hey, I want y'all to see something that's, that. Hold on, let me, let me get my bearings. <laughs> Boy. I want y'all to see something in the beginning, okay? And this is very key when you're dealing with uh, Pastor Rufus. Notice how the host of his show asks a question, and he starts to respond to something that Pastor Rufus says. Pastor Rufus immediately cuts him off. I told Pastor Rufus this very thing. I said, one of your main problems is you don't listen. You dominate Every single conversation, you dominate it to the point where nobody can literally say anything whatsoever at all. Then the comment of you ain't you ain't nobody special. Pastor Dow just covered that. Can't nobody tell me about Pastor Dow. This is what he's told. He told me at Tabernacles, the last one, on the porch. Straightway had $60,000 to their name, and Pastor Dow took $55,000 and gave it to us there in Georgia and started that community. Man, can't nobody tell me nothing about Pastor Dow. Now, he's very good at telling me that all over that he keeps telling me I'm, I'm, I'm lying, but he has yet to tell me what I've lied about. So he's going to come across this, and my question to you, Pastor Rufus, is with the statement I just made, tell me I'm lying. Tell me I'm lying. Hatred and jealousy towards him. Okay. When he told me that I went down there to preach the King Saul message about him, and he told me, that's when he was yelling in my ear on the first day, mind you, after, which was uh, on Shabbat, literally that evening, Shabbat had went out, the night before, he was singing You Make Me Whole right next to Pastor Dow, singing and rejoicing, only to call me the next morning and literally yelling in my ear for two hours, talking about what spirit is Pastor Dow and this and this. That's why I first learned about Jamie, because I never knew who Jamie was and all of that rhetoric that he was putting out, which proves that he's been talking to Ringo as well. But then he turns around and he makes a statement to me Pastor Dow has a spirit. And I said, okay, what spirit is that then? 
And he said, it's the same one you preached about because he doesn't have any javelins to throw at me. He just has videos. I said again, so now you King David, one. And two, those are assumptions, man. I kept telling him those are assumptions because what I kept saying to him is, all right, what's the solution? I said, what's the solution? Instead of wasting all this time sounding real and feminine, what is the solution, man? What is the solution? And he never wanted that. It was a slander fest from the beginning. So this whole level of love that the people were showing me and Pastor Dow got jealous of, okay, guess what? You can ask anybody that has been to any feast, any Shabbat service, any time on the land, anywhere, guess what? I know Pastor Dow ain't gonna say it, so I'm gonna say it. Ain't nobody tripping on what Pastor Rubens is doing. People line up to talk to Pastor Dow. People wait to speak with Pastor Dow because they've seen him for years on, on YouTube, especially the people that are new. They want to come and tell him, man, y'all used you, man, because when you preach this and when y'all used you to speak this and you taught this, man, this thing I started applying and it started changing my life. Wasn't nobody going to Pastor Rufus and doing that, man. Stop the rhetoric, man. This is this is literally deaf comedy jam, man. These comments, man. Hallelujah. Y'all go, go ahead. <laughs> It's on you, Michael. All right. So uh, what we're going to do now, um, we're going to go to, uh, to another section of the video. Um, if, if we go to the 31 second, I'm sorry, to the 31 minute and uh, 25 second mark. And uh, when you get there, you can just go ahead and play So the 31 minute. That makes you wicked. And that's why I call them wicked. And that's why they want to lie on my land. Because see, that land is still in my name. And I'm telling you right now, I thank the Father that those lands never got put in the name of the ministry. Because guess what? I still would be fine. <laughs> Believe you me. I still would have been fine. But think about it. I'd have been that. I'd have had nothing. Nothing there in Georgia that I built. Pastor Dow didn't build that. I did. Me and the brothers that lived there with me throughout the 14 years, because those brothers changed. I'm the only one that was constant the whole time. Me and my family. So that's something that, that the father put me over to build. Right? And if you go back and listen to a lot of old messages, pastor used to say that. That the people that are over these communities are the community leaders. Who's ever over it, they run it, not me. Now it done changed up that he's over everything everything and he wants control total power over everything well that shit just won't gonna fly so i'm glad that the majority of that land down there was still in my name or in my foundation so he can't do shit about it he can't do nothing about it he can take the saints that are staying with him stick them all in that one acre of land and they can get off my my land and what i'm gonna do is what they asked me to do y'all i'm telling y'all i don't give a shit what they say what they asked me to do because i offered to buy that acre Y'all heard that. Offering 50 stacks for it. He said no. Now he said I'll sell it to a heathen for 50000 even if it's worth one fifty. But he won't sell it to me. Right? So I said if you do this, you can have these lands. If you want to keep these for the saints since they worked on it, nope. We're going to go buy our own land. Cool. He said sell that land and split the proceeds with them brothers down there. I said cool. I'll do that. And guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to do that. Even though some of them brothers have been assholes to me. Oh, oh hold up. Uh, show, Showtime, what's good, Showtime? Hey, um, Showtime. Cottage, what's good? Terrence Hill. All right. First off, I got a question. Um, I heard that he does these sport talk radio shows four or five times a week. Three, four hours of pop sometime up in the wee hours of the night. Speaking about secular talk, I mean, basketball for hours hours on end my question is what is a pastor in the ministry doing on a sports radio broadcast talking about basketball four or five times a week hours on end 
again, that confirms when I called him lazy, he's lazy. Now, let me let me say this, y'all. I cannot say that everything that Elder Rufus, Pastor Rufus has ever done has all been wrong. He hasn't. He has done much great things as far as making ministry trips, doing counselings, um, being there for people uh, when they in need of different things. He's done that. But when it comes to putting his hand to the plow, he has not done that. He has not done that at all in any way, shape, fashion, or form, or any place. He tried to flip the script, and he continues to keep doing this by trying to say that I am saying that the brethren, the brethren, um, that Pastor Dow is talking about us. We can't do nothing. We No, no, no. Don't get it wrong. I said, you can't do nothing. That's how I've always presented. I said, you as a leader, you cannot lead by example. I told that to his face. He can't do it. I said it in the meeting in front of all the elders and the pastors. I even used the analogy of saying, I, Pastor Rupert has four wives, four wives and two daughters down there. I said, you take your family and I'll take my family. And I can literally take my family my me myself and my issues and my family and i can build a house from the ground up just using them i promise you he cannot do that nor make this statement you know why because he has wasted time the man does not want to work you've heard the saints there in georgia say it he does have the gift of gab he will run his mouth for hours on end without end and wear you out he even told elder mitchell and some of the other brothers, that all the brothers in Georgia is with him because he kept wearing them out through meetings and meetings and meetings and meetings. So when the brothers finally came up the straight way to hear the other side and then give their own testimony, it was cut and dry. It was literally cut and dry. So I got a question I want to ask these two pastors right here. He made a statement and said that, that I won't, control over every community of y'all's community. I'm asking y'all, is that a true statement? And if it's not a true statement, please clarify. Pastor Corey. Uh, no, that's not a true statement at all. As long as I've been here since 2011 and Pastor Dow, you ordained me as a pastor in 2014. And not one day of my pastorship have you sat ruling, hand and foot, demanding all of these unrighteous check-ins. You have not uh, micromanaged. My, yeah, you ain't micromanaged. Nothing, nothing I've done. You, you've only encourage me you, you know you've always had the door open for me to come and ask questions if anything and as far as all the financial affairs any of the uh councils with the saints whenever uh we bring those to you you defer to what we have here as boots on the ground and insight to the matters and allow us to judge those according to the book righteously so you have not ruled improperly over no community. Neither have when we purchased this land here. You have not demanded anything out of this, you know, uh, or demanded that we turn deeds over to you. You have not done that because you really have been more than trusting in all of the leaders when they say that they are part and that they are following in your footsteps. You allow leaders to prove that to you. So that's that's my short take. Pastor that is the flat out facts. I'll give y'all again an eyewitness account. When we found the land here, Pastor Dow drove up from Tennessee, and I want to say it was for three or four hours, and we walked this land. Pastor Dow, myself, and the brethren, Elder Rob, Deacon Samuel, Brother Lee, we walked this land for hours. Not only did we walk this land, Pastor Dow 
at that point said, all right, y'all got a lot of work to do. It's time to get to work. And that we started doing. And as Pastor Dow would continue to come over the years, he would see what we're doing. He would say, man, this is good. Keep doing what you're doing. And then he would turn around and he would give an offering and say, hey, have you ever thought about this or this? Y'all might need this. Okay. He makes suggestions. And any wise man, knowing that he's built the community for only over 30 years, would listen to him and not turn around and say, we don't have to do what you say. They would listen. So this whole ruling and dominating and uh, uh, telling everybody what they got to do, that is a flat out lie. And any community leader on in this ministry can tell you the exact same thing. The exact same thing. That is a flat out lie. Can I, can I address one more lie? Or should I just go ahead and go back? No, go ahead. Boy, boy, boy. Ah, y'all heard the statement. Ah, the lands that I built. Yes. Boy. Okay. So <laughs> this is this is actually all right. <clears throat> so how many building projects? I want to say the one here, Kentucky, uh, Alabama, Georgia. At the hub, a few building projects there. And guess what? Out of five or six building projects that I'm talking about major building projects that we've been in this ministry, I've seen Pastor Rufus lay one block. Literally one. And the one that he laid had to get taken up because we had to adjust all the corners and start over. That is... Mm -hmm. The truth. Now, again, he loves telling me I'm lying. Mm -hmm. Tell me where I'm lying. He said he built, he did over 50% of the multi-purpose building. Well, I can't speak for that. I wasn't there for that one. But I can tell you the one here, he didn't lay one block. I can't tell you in straightway, he didn't lay one block. Even the building class we did in straightway, he didn't lay one block. I can't tell you in Alabama, he didn't lay one block. He didn't tie no rebar. He ain't mixed no mud. He sat around the job site screaming and hollering. That's the truth. Not only that, the one block I saw him lay, that was on his house. So when he makes a statement, I built, who built it? The saints drove down from hours away and the saints that lived there in Georgia and the saints built that. That is the truth. Majority of the time, he was gone. And somebody just put here, no, sir, he did not do 50% of the work on the multi-purpose building. Straightway, Georgia, the remnant. So again, these are lies, and you have witnesses, eyewitnesses. So, Pastor. Go ahead, Chef. Pastor, now, we heard exactly what you said about Pastor Rufus, his work ethic and what he has done since he said that he built. He said he built that. All right. So my own lips don't say it. Tell them what myself and my crew has done when we traveled from different places to go to different places to help build. Every single job site that we get on. Pastor Dow and the brethren, Pastor Dow, Brother Scott, Brother JC, Brother Brett, Brother McNabb. I hope I'm not forgetting anybody. Teacher Shane. But they, and Teacher Shane. Teacher Shane is going to strike every wall and make sure that job site is clean. And the rest of them brothers going to lay block the entire time as well as Pastor Dow. Pastor Dow gets to a job site. I usually got to hunt him down to get his pre-wrap and his tape. So I can make sure his hand taped up right. But then after that, he hits it. That is the truth. And anybody will tell you that that is the truth. Brother Scott and JC hit it. Brother Brett, they hit it, hit the ground running and will work the entire time and help you clean the job site. 
That has been <laughs> an eyewitness account of every single building project that we have, that I have ever been a part of in this ministry. Mike Israel. So I saw in the comments uh, some somebody, and th th this this is the, just a narrow focus of some of these people. But somebody said um, that it's carnal to make a big deal out of focusing on. Uh, and I'm kind of paraphrasing what they said. Well, here it is. It says we focus on build buildings built with hands carnal so they're trying to say that's carnal to focus on that but what these people don't realize is there's a direct correlation between how you work physically and how you obey there into the spiritual and if you've been paying attention to what's been being said here with pastor Mir, pastor Dow, and uh pastor Corey bought out you would see that there is a direct correlation between it but Again, a, a lot of y'all, man, I, I don't know where y'all, I don't know what y'all be focusing on. Pro I think it's your feelings. We, uh, all right. Well, that's so cardinal. I mean, it, it's clearly written in the prophets um, that when you're in Babylon, you ought to build you houses, plant you gardens. You build houses, you dwell in them. That's a direct command to Israel that when we're in captivity, that's what we're supposed to do. Uh, so I don't understand. I mean, if that is cardinal, then how cardinal is it to pay rent? How cardinal <laughs> is it to pay a mortgage? How cardinal is it to be in debt? How cardinal? I mean, the Bible says the borrower is a servant to the lender, a little slave to the lender. We're not in debt to nobody. We don't owe nobody nothing. So how cardinal is that if when we're obeying what the Bible says? See, you can't make sense of a lot of these nonsensical so-called people who believe that they have a brain that operates on a pure wavelength because they'll just say anything. And so remember, foolish and unlearned questions we're supposed to avoid because the only thing they're going to do is just continue up with more strife and contention. So a fool would utter all of his mind. So just because somebody says something, that don't mean we have to address it. We need to address intelligent thinking people, people who actually have a mind that operates on a higher lane, higher plane that really truly can discern and really truly can ask questions that will stimulate thought that would bring about some action and begin to put a defibrillate on other people's minds so that they themselves will start to have original thoughts and begin to grow in themselves. Right. That's good. All right. Uh, we're going to go to the 15 minute and 15 second mark. Uh, that's where we're going to go on there. And I mean, while he's going there, boy, y'all don't, y'all couldn't imagine how crazy these comments are. Some dude, this dude's name is the devil himself. Oh, that, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait a minute for look, a second. Look at this guy. Oh, look. <laughs> Oh, yeah. It's right, so crazy. So y'all know we've had Moses call the <laughs> here, right? We've had, can, can one of y'all please bring that recording in here, please? We've had Elijah over all these, these 30 years of this ministry call the ministry. We even had Melchizedek call <laughs> the ministry. So, I mean, if, if, if um, I think Summer has, if they can pull this up right here, you know who I had called the ministry and left a message on voicemail? Do y'all want to know? Who that? Satan himself. I was just trying to play this message. Wow. Come on. Listen. Um, so you can play for Pastor if he wants to hear it. But out of all the people we've heard from, we have now heard from Satan personally. <laughs> no new message. My name is Satan, uh, and I just wanted to command Pastor Dow on the phenomenal job he's been doing on taking these men, these, these men's wives. I want him, I want him to keep up the good work. I'm proud of him, and I'll see him soon in the abyss. Tell him keep it up, because we don't know how long uh, the 
the most highest willing to be and tell them I don't want to group that now. Just continue on taking these men's wives and proceed to and uh, we shall uh, have a big party. Okay, us and all the other prophetic spirits. All right, so there you have it. Satan called the child. Was y'all able to hear it? Okay, so think about this for a second. Now, um, and anybody been following me, they know I have issues, which we're probably going to get to later on. I'm not going to dig. I'm not going to digress and answer this in full, brother Israel. So don't worry about. It. I'm not going to steal the thunder, okay? But um, he says taking uh, these men's wives. First of all, um, I am not. I am not married to a woman that has been covered. I married Mother Carol. I married Mama Nellie, which she was a divorce E. I married the Summer. She's never been married. And I'm married to Selena. She's never been married. Now, all of these are legal, these are legal terms. In other words, they are my Isha's. Are you following me? So, Who's all these so-called wives? And I'm going to make this statement, and I'm going to be very strong about this. If I'm able to take all these so-called men's wives, what kind of men does that say that you are? It's pretty sad, isn't it? Again, foolish statement. It's an unlearned statement. It's crazy. But see, this is the type of environment that we live in now. We live in, in an environment that people are claiming to be Satan, claiming to be Moses, claiming to be Melchizedek, claiming to be Elijah, claiming to be all these people, and we're supposed to sit there and really, truly entertain them and listen to them? It's all laughable and but comical. That's what it is. So let's get back to the broadcast here. All right. So uh, if we're at the 15 uh, minute and 15 second mark, let's go ahead and play that. At the end of the day, it is what it is, bro. It is what it is. Pastor Dollar ain't always been this way. Because if he was, I wouldn't have been. I wouldn't have been uh, serving alongside of him. I wouldn't have been. I wouldn't have taken on the straightway name. But really, bro, it's been four main things that jacked him up. When he start getting more women, he don't know how to handle them. He don't. He think he do, but he don't. When he start getting a whole bunch of money, that really, really jacked him up. Because when I came to straightway, they was poor as shit. They were poor as shit. And then the money started flowing. And he changed. Then when the football brothers came, the guys from the NFL and the military brothers came, now he had the rah-rah crew to support him in all the dumb shit. And it just turned into this, this, this beast that is called King Dow now. Because that's how I call him that, not to disrespect him. I said because that's how he functions. He functions like a king. How you many, know? um, oh, 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 what up, my boy, Marty? Thanks for the super chat, Marty. Appreciate the super chat. He said, thanks for putting the battery and D-Lo back. Of course I did that. Okay. Let me address this. I'm going to address these points right here in, in concession. So he says, um, more women, and I don't know how to handle my women. Y'all heard that, right? He did He did make that statement. I, I didn't misconstrue it. Is that true? That's what he, he said. said. Okay. So, so let me see. We all know that Selena is not his biological daughter. Neither is he married to Selena's mother. It's only been within the last year or so that he has made laid claims that this is my daughter. So let's play that game. Let's play that game. Because I just married Selena in November. All right, so watch this. So if I cannot handle, that's, what he, that's the statement he makes, my women then why would you, as a father, give me your daughter? See, people, it's called rhetoric. People just run their mouth with impunity. It makes no sense. It's nonsensical. Now, Selena does not look like him, does not smell like him, does not talk like him. It's nothing nowhere near, anywhere near the loins of his family at all. It's just a statement that they make because... Uh, whenever it suits them and fit them, they want to act like that they have a fatherhood or something. Now, Erica is my daughter. She's not biologically my daughter. But Erica's my daughter because I'm married to her mother. 
Now, Erica's status has changed. She is married to Elder Mitchell. Everything that she is as a woman is because of Elder Mitchell now. The mother that she is now is because she is in that man's house under that man's roof. This is sound thinking. This is righteous. He said when he first showed up in straightway, we were poor as shit. Um, we were still able to have a roof over our head, clothes on our back and shoes on our feet. But I remember when you showed up the straightway, you showed up in a 1996 Lincoln, an old green Lincoln with every single thing you had in your life in that trunk. You showed up and you had zero money. You had nowhere to go. You were literally running around like a nomad. I mean, when you make these statements, you don't think that you're going to be called on the stuff that you're, and, and mind you, you didn't buy nothing in straightway. Everything you ever acquired in straightway has been given to you. Starting when you come in here to this man right here. Have you forgot that I set you up and your family gave you a roof over your head? Gave you a place to stay? Have you forgotten that? Have you forgotten? You tell everybody you had these six-figure jobs. If you have a six-figure job, how in the hell that all you have to your name is a Lincoln, an old Lincoln Continental with every single thing you have in your trunk, in the back of that trunk. It makes no sense. And then you said, I mean, but you claim we're poor shit, but you sure didn't mind taking our money. You sure didn't mind using our money when it would benefit you. I mean, somebody, listen, I'm not worried about the, the illiterate, the spiritually illiterate, the spiritual retarded people that cannot grasp this stuff. I'm not at all. But it's got to be sooner or later, somebody's got to see that when you hear his voice, there's some envy in there. There's some jealousy in there. There's some rage in there. Over what, though? I mean, even in the world, there's this old saying, you don't bite the hand that feeds you. I mean, damn. And, and think about this. I'm a man that never, ever boasts about it. He said that when the NFL people and all these other people came here, uh, I had a, a raw, raw crew. None of them have ever been able to out-cheer you. In, in any way, Man, man what you saying? <laughs> None of them. Not, not, all of them put together has not ever been able to out-praise because the Bible says, don't let your own list praise. Let another man list praise. Nobody has ever took it to the level that Elder Rufus or Pastor Rufus has. And everybody, if they know anything about me, they know for a fact that Pastor Dow, I'm not in this like what Pastor uh, Muir, Muir did earlier. I'm not in, I'm not, you're not going to hear me sit up and singing my own praises and stuff. I let somebody else do it. But everybody knows, and like I said up in the meeting up at Hebrews and Negroes, all these other people right here, you can't trust them, but I guarantee you, you can trust me. And my track record proves it. I have given out hundreds and thousands of dollars for the benefit of Israel and never even asked anybody to say a word about it. A lot of times when I do it, I do it underhand, behind the scene when nobody even knows it. What is the issue? What's the problem? See, this is what I'm talking about. There is some visceral, some malice. There is some rage that is going on behind these statements right here. He said, I'm the one that got the spirit. But when you listen to him, he's the one that's got the spirit. And everybody out there that's privy to this spirit is easy for you to jump on the bandwagon because you just like him. I know real, no real. Um, so anyway, now we got Pastor Muir and Pastor Corey coming in on this one right here. But I'll tell you what, if I don't know how to handle women and stuff, then why'd you give me your alleged so-called quote unquote daughter that you only that's only your daughter in, in your word and at the dropping at the edge of your lips only? Then if we was poor as shit, then why'd you show up? Because we damn sure didn't get no offering from you. And 
when all these people come and all of a sudden they're my greatest raw raw crew, it, to me I, I hear even in that I hear envy, I hear jealousy. I heard on the broadcast where you talk about the NFL people; these are accomplished men. You talk about your accomplishments, but you don't have any receipts for your accomplishments. There's no film for your accomplishments. You have nothing to be able to go back on for anybody to fall back on and say that you've done all this stuff that you have touted to us over the years during these feasts. Nobody can lay nothing tangible to, but when you cut on the film, you can see Daniel Mir. You can cut on the film, you can see Rob Mattis. You cut on the film, you can see uh, Kabir by Jabil Million. They didn't have too much film in my day, but you can see pictures of Pastor Dow. In everything I've ever said and everything I've ever done, you can see receipts on it. It's viable. You can, it's backed up. It's tangible. In our day, they had newspaper. You'll see my name all in the Tennessean, in the newspaper. If I tell you I was a paratrooper, damn it, I can produce the picture. I can show you. I can show you my, my graduation certificate. I can show you the reward. I can show you all this. You say all, you're all of this, and we're supposed to believe it, but ain't nobody seen nothing. Pastor Mir. Pastor, you said it. <coughs> you said it. I mean, oh, man. I, you know, I, I was going to talk about his comment of uh, I ain't never asked nobody in straight way for nothing, but if y'all are y'all are privy to these old recordings that have taken place with this mess, y'all know exactly what what came from that. And the real thing is the the invoking of Yah's name while you're lying. That's the thing. That's the thing. When you invoke Yah's name, he literally said to me. Well, I guess I'm gonna say it. He literally said to me, "I ain't never asked nobody in straight way for nothing, not a dime." And then he says, you know why I asked you for that money? <laughs> Literally. And I'm sitting there saying to myself, what? He said, because y'all told me to. And that's where I had the issue with. Because I said to myself, wait a minute. That's not what you told me. You went through a whole spiel about cars and all this mess that you was dealing with, that you had to get right back in Georgia and you was leaving the next day to go take care of it. So if y'all told you to do that, you sure turned around and drove all the way to Georgia and called me the next morning from Georgia. The next morning, telling me, hey, you remember what I told you about yesterday? Yeah, man, you know, you know, I just wanted to make sure, you know, because, uh, I, you know, I, I, I just wanted to make sure and, 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 I, and I wasn't going to ask, but I'm going to ask you because, you know, and I'll pay you back. And I said, Pastor Ruby, you ain't got to go through all that. Boom. But he said, Again, Yah told him to, and he's sticking to that, man. He didn't. He didn't gave him seven thousand dollars. What's that, Shell? You gave him seven thousand dollars just because he asked for it. Just because he asked for it, and he paid it back. He definitely paid it back. But again, the problem I have is for him coming out all over the place talking about Yah told him to, and to test my spirit because I was telling people that I could help them, which is a bona fide lie. And the reason why that's a bona fide lie is I don't own anything. So I can't just make a rash decision to just up and give all over the place. Don't work that way. I have people that I speak to very diligently about before I make big decisions like that. So to come around and say uh, that I was around telling people I could help you, that's a flat out lie. And Again, he invoking the name of Yah in those lies. That's how daring this spirit is, man. I'm trying to tell y'all. Y'all better hear. I need we need to digress here for a moment because he had mentioned Pastor Corey's name um, and said that he misapplied the scriptures over in Numbers, the 15th chapter. Um, out of which we all know, we all heard it, uh, that Pastor Corey. Um, he was the one that actually bought the law into play. He was the one that actually broke it down to the T in front of Pastor Rufus. 
in front of all of us. We were there. Pastor Corey laid this thing out beautifully. And at that time, uh, when it was said, Pastor Rufus was agreeing with it when we were there in that meeting. Pastor Corey? Yes, sir. Can y'all hear me good? All right. Awesome. So, you, you know, here's the, the, the big thing about, you know, looking at th this presumptuous spirit and really just the position that Pastor Rufus is taking. Because I, I just want to back up just really briefly and say two things. One, Pastor Muir showed that Pastor Rufus never did Matthew 18 the way that it should have been. But when you fast forward back to this presumptuous spirit, which we found several times, especially during the feast with all the people who there seemed to be like all of these little pre-meetings and pre-discussions on what Pastor Rufus was planning on coming to the meeting to do, to embarrass you, to set the record straight with you. And, and then, you know, as he got into that other meeting, with you all and he raised his voice see this is what everybody is missing everybody's missing the disorder you know everybody's missing uh how much you know when you have an organization that is attempting to put things in order according to what we should be doing in the book and according to what righteous men is going to attempt to do and you find where past Rufus has just absolutely stepped out of bounds in this this entire process you know i'm not going to go there but i already got his voice queued up you know but you know he he, he mentioned a while back you know when you played it michael israel about how you're supposed to have all of these you know this this entire council being a part of this and one, he, he you, you said you didn't want all, everybody there. Then you said you wanted everybody there. Then you said I wasn't supposed to be there because you mentioned not having teeth in the game. Then I got you on tape saying all I need for you, you know, when judgment come. Then you, then you asking me to make sure I judge righteously. See, the whole thing that all of you all missing is that this whole time, Pastor Rufus has been double minded. You have been backwards in your whole approach. If you was trying to win, you know, favor and, and be in line. But the, here's the big thing. Since you had all these meetings with Straightway Georgia. And then the attempt was to come down since you have talked to them. And, and it was the attempt of those who sat in judgment with him. To come down and be in front of straightway Georgia. So now everything that he said, we can prove that he had no witness so that we could move forward and show just how much you moved in a disorder, disorderly manner. And worse, if anyone among you walked disorderly, had no fellowship with him. No fellowship. That's what the words say. So when, when y'all don't know what it is and all you're doing is talking, I'm looking at all the dumb ass shit dumb comments it showed me how dumb black people are you black hebrew israelite niggas how y'all don't think and your mind just don't operate worth shit and, and it's just amazing because you get mad because you got somebody to tell you off ain't nobody gonna stand down because we know what we doing we we know what it is that's why think about it you got all of these brothers and sisters and mothers that have lived and been around and so-called have watched Pastor Rufus footwork and you you've preached to them and you had Q and a you had all these things that is supposedly represent how much you are with the ministry well guess what they came just as confused when they came and they had the opportunity to look exactly what we're talking about in this presumptuous spirit for the final time when we attempted to come down you the one said ain't no wicked people coming down on your land so all of a sudden now we wicked all of a sudden we changed and we this or we that 
when it's your turn, when you on video, you on recording saying whatever y'all say, we gonna do. Well, we, we, we you know why we, we arrived to that. Because in the meeting, when you came down the straightway, you had no witness for nothing you say. So in, in righteousness, if you don't have nothing to stand on and you come in this hard, that has to be dealt with because even the book says, it, it said, receive not an accusation against the elder except by two witnesses. And if we have two witnesses, it says rebuke him openly. So we was coming to Georgia to follow at least what we know, you know, in the attempt to all the deflection that he was doing, we was attempting to come down and handle it in that capacity and not in the capacity where you still trying to dictate through this whole process. And that's what all you damn fools don't understand because you just running your mouth. Mm -hmm. And I just want to say that I don't have a lot to say to add because people just want juicy ass information. And I, I you know, I'm almost, I ain't going to even go there on, on this broadcast. Huh? <laughs> Cause I'm telling, you know, these folks, they just don't make sense. And, and pastor, I can vouch. Because again, I wasn't even involved in none of this. And when I look at the whole process and I look at how improperly Elder Brent ran out, and when you look at presumptuous and you look at it from the base of, being, of, of Hebrew, and you look at it being boldly defined, has not, when I look at this process, have not Pastor Rufus been boldly defined in the things that he has tried to dictate in the <laughs> no place among the body that's no place among i don't care when you got ordained that's no place for you to set that type of tone and example when you know that people are following those who are setting examples out front that's all i got chef i just my grizzle let's go on to the next one you can't come behind that you can't all right so now like i said uh, I see y'all in the comments and everything, and you know, we I was uh, we were t talking about some of this stuff, or I talked about some of this stuff on my show on Monday, and a lot of people were like, "Oh, Mike, just duck in." They they were saying, "Oh, you're avoiding questions." No, I I I told people, "Look, we're gonna have all the pastors on here. We ain't nobody ducking no smoke. We're coming straight down the middle." You know what I'm saying? And all, as you can see, you're getting those answers. So now we're going to get into probably one of the topics that became, I guess, became the main spotlight topic out of this whole thing. And it's just another distraction. You know what I'm saying? But we're going to bring light and we're going to educate those who have, you know, ears to hear and eyes to see. So as y'all know, a, a lot of this stuff really got pushing because uh, some dude, because some dude was just in here asking, they act like we're scared of somebody who makes videos or something. So there, there's some dude, I'll put it up here, some dude named Ringo or whatever. And I, I said on my show, the dude, if you have the sermon, you can see the dude is kind of effeminate. And, but yet, a lot of people deem what he's saying literally as written word. That's how they're acting. I just saw somebody come in here and damn near demanding, are you going to respond to Ringo's stuff? Look, y'all got to discern who's talking. Now, with, I'm going to put on 30 seconds of this, okay? This, this is a music video on this dude's page. Now, now, now check this out. Now, listen to this. In a world, you can try me all you want. Try me if you can. Test me all you want. Now, now this looked like a dude showing off his porn room that he whack off in. That's what this dude looked like. And, and, and 
Like y'all are acting like this dude is is, is the uh, bastion of righteousness that you know, because some dude just came in the comments demanding that we answer it, whatever he's asking. But what I, what I do want to uh, get to and have Pastor educate some of y'all on who who have ears to hear and eyes to see is on divorce because this is the thing everybody that it just keeps in past <coughs> the same pastors in adultery he's an adulterer he's an adulterer women can't get divorced and divorce and this <laughs> that and the other and i mean in twenty thousand different ways you got all these people just adulterer adulterer and they kept coming on my show saying the same thing he's an adulterer you're falling adult and it and it's like hey and i said you know what i ain't gonna respond to this because pass is gonna be on the show tomorrow night and with that said pass i'm gonna hand it over to you well that's a pretty easy subject isn't it As a matter of fact that's the subject that i actually tried to um get Geno Jennings to take up on a debate because he actually made the statement. I would debate anyone on this divorce and remarriage. Now, listen, you have to understand that people take positions, doctrinal positions, and they actually believe that their position that they're taking is the right position. Listen, I'm not here to convince or try to convince anyone. You can do whatever you want to do, but I do have the word of truth. Now, my question is this. For a lot of these people right here that, that are so interested or is, uh, in, in my salvation, which I don't believe none of these haters is interested in my salvation. As a matter of fact, uh, they want my destruction more than anything. But when you got married, I'm talking to everybody out there. When you got married, you can only get married one or two ways. That's it. Either you got married by the state and you reside or either you drew up your own contract and agreement and you and your woman signed it and it was honored by Yah. The majority of you people out here, I would say probably have a secular marriage license. If you have a secular marriage license, then who presides over that contract or that agreement? The state does. So you have no power to dissolve any damn thing without the authority of the state. See, what happens is, is that people, they get, and they, they, they come into this, they start hearing, we Israel, we keep the commandments, we're all this, we're all that. They start hearing all this, right? And then they forget what the book says over in Exodus 34, 12, when it says, you take heed to yourself, that you make no covenant with the inhabitants of the land, whether you go, let's it be a snare unto you. Exodus 23, 32. Do not make a covenant. That means agreement. With them, nor their mighty ones. Let them not dwell in your land. Let them not make you to sin against me when you serve their mighty ones and it becomes a snare unto you. Deuteronomy 7, 2. And when Yahweh your Elohim shall deliver you before thee, Thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them and make no covenant, nor show mercy unto them. Neither shall thou make marriages with them. Thy daughters shall not give unto thy sons and your daughters you to, don't take to your son. So we got all these laws that telling us to make no covenant with the foreign people of this land. And 99.9% .9 of you that are listening to this have went out there and got a state marriage license. And you believe that you are married under Yah, you are deceived. You're greatly deceived. You're not married under Yah. You're married under that state. You know how you know the reason why? Because if you are a man of Yah, only you can dissolve that contract. So when you go out there and you get married by the state, guess what? You got to dissolve that contract and agreement. Don't come over here hollering, you playing Hebrew and you playing Israelite. When you set up in Christianity and you accepted all their contracts and their agreements and every damn thing else. Then all of a sudden, uh, a, a, a woman can't divorce. You wasn't even under that law in the first damn place. So you can't be set up playing both sides of the fence. 
and you take you know what you're talking about concerning adultery. Now, Deuteronomy 24, verse 1 through 4, it gives you the divorce law. That is the law. It says, when a man have taken a wife and married her and come to pass that she find no favor in his eyes because he have found some uncleanness in her, then let him write her a bill of divorce and give it into her hand and send her out of the house. Let me see some of you people out there that's got a secular marriage license try all this. Try to say to you divorce and dissolve your so-called marriage license that you got from the state that you didn't marry under Yah. And let's see how far that goes. And when she is departed out of his house, she may, she may go and be another man's wife. So if a woman, be it secular or in Israel, if the contract and agreement is dissolved, secular, pagan, heathen, by the state, it's severed. The law of divorce is sitting right here. If a man puts a divorce, a bill of divorce in this woman's hand, the book says in verse 2, I mean, in chapter uh, Deuteronomy 24, verse 2, it says, and when she is departed out of his house, she may go and be another man's wife. And if the latter husband hate her and write her bill of divorce and give it in her hand and send her out of his house, or if the latter husband die, which took her to be his wife, her former husband, which sent her away, may not take her again to be his wife after that she is defiled. For it's an abomination before Yahweh. And thou shalt not cause the land to sin, which Yahweh Elohim giveth you for an inheritance. So you people don't know what you do. You, you, you go out here, you run with whatever I just got finished seeing from Michael Israel. I just got finished seeing one of these drag queens with his long hair, which the book says an abomination for a man to even have. You mean to tell me that you people out there listening to bingo TV with some shit like that? Are you serious? And you want to come over here and judge the righteous? The bottom line, a divorcee has a right to be remarried. A widow has a right to be remarried. It's just that many of you are scripturally stupid and dumb and illiterate as hell. And tell the truth. Many of you don't give two nickels worth of rat's ass about truth or even living for y'all. You don't. You just here for the damn moment because you're an agent of Satan. That's all it is. You don't give a shit about righteous. You don't. You don't give a tell the truth. All, I was some, I was flattered at first that all these people really truly cared about my soul salvation. You don't give a nickels worth of rat's ass about my soul salvation. You don't even care about yours because you won't even obey the book. So stop pretending and stop playing. And then you simple-minded people that's out there have been deceived by these wicked-ass people because they give you something juicy and all this whole other shit, and you want to go follow along with it. So let me tell you something. You better take heed to people who have a true track record of fear and y'all keeping his commandments because when this is all said and done, this is the only life you're going to live. You better hope. Don't worry about hoping if I'm right. You better hope you're right. You better hope that your name is written down. Because those of you that fancy yourself as my judge, you way off. And to set up and to think that I've given 30-something years of my life to this just so I can live in sin and die in sin is nonsense. We're stupid as hell. There's no way in hell that I would trade my soul salvation for sin. So you can't define sin on your own terms. The book defines what sin is. And if I just did, if I didn't just get finished seeing what the hell sin is, I don't know what it is. What what in the hell was that? I just got finished seeing. What is that? A damn it, it definitely, hey, it, de it definitely wasn't <laughs> modesty. That's an infeminine maniac. Anyway, Pastor, hey, Pastor Corey, Pastor Mir, I'll go ahead, man. That boy got that, he, he got that Kirk Franklin lip gloss on in that video. That's exactly what he had on his lip. Lips shining. Boy, I tell you. Don't play that Starburst no more. Mm -mm. And, that, and, and, and that's my thing. It's like, it, 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 you, you nailed it, Pastor. Because these people, they expose themselves just in... 
even in their little videos they do because he trying to hold you to the letter of the law but i mean just that video right there what what happened to modesty what does the word say about that you know i mean what happened to modesty so you got to make it make try to make it make sense but um pastor uh did you have anything else me yeah did any did y'all have anything yeah. else or did y'all want to go into anything else well I, I think that um more than anything is very important y'all have to understand first of all as straightway all right i don't give a nickels worth of rat's ass about the court of public opinion i don't it's still not going to stop us doing what we're doing we are free people we're under y'all we're keeping this law statutes and commandments we're st still continue to keep growing um, we're still building. Um, our children are free from his wicked system. It's the same message that has always been from old. Come out of her, my people. Come out from among them. Be you separate. And, hey, you can see. Man, have y'all seen how much my name is actually out there in the front of the title of almost all these videos? Pastor Muir said to me, he said, man, I can't believe all this stuff is in my feed. I personally am thinking the following, <laughs> even though it's mentioned in falsehood and lies, I'm just glad that it's being mentioned because I, I taught y'all over the years that all publicity is good publicity. Most people can't take it, but all publicity is good. Why? Because your name is out there because you're going to get some intelligent people that's going to probably run across this feed, this video, and run across some of the other ones. They're going to do their due diligence and check it out and find out, you know what? By their fruits, you're going to know them. Pastor Rufus ain't got no damn fruit. He said it's, it's so much fruit. Where's it at? Show us all the fruit. Show us all the fruit. I mean, after all, the people that was with you for 10 years, you thought that you had every one of them, and you ain't got nobody. Zero. 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 Zero with you. Even with all your manipulation, your coercion, your lying, uh, and all everything you've done. Your falsifying information is sad. And then you got bingo TV out here just running around rampant. And I thought I just got finished looking at this shit. And you mean to tell me that y'all going to sit and listen to him as if he's some type of an authority or some type of damn judge? Oh, no. I'll be a fool to sit up and let somebody like that with damn feminine ass sit up and think that you're going to fancy yourself as my judge. Look like a damn transgender. He looks like one of those guys that when I go to Atlanta airport, I, that's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at bingo. I'm looking at bingo TV. Bearded up, long ass hair with high heels. He looks just like them transformers in Atlanta when I go through that damn wicked ass airport. There's no way. I'll be a for man. Ain't no way. So have at it. Hit me with your best shot. Well, the bottom line is, is this. Um, we know that a deranged person is going to continue to keep having more to say and keep having more to say. To hate. It, it, it's just the way that it works. Um, but when it's all said and done, by their fruits, you're going to know them. Y'all need to, hey, you need to make your own choice and decision what you're going to do. But I do know this. The world is getting is going from bad to worse. I can only imagine what we're going to be at five years from now. Especially after I've just seen where we come from five years ago. It used to be 20 years. You had increments and you could see the decline. It's less than five years now you can see the decline in all this stuff right here. Less than five. We better get about our father's business. And my admonishment to all the straightway and everybody else, including my own self. Now, listen, don't get me wrong. Y'all should answer the scribes and Pharisees vigorously like a man he did and dispelled every single one of their lies and rebuked them openly. I believe in that. But man, if people are going to believe what the naysayers say, there ain't nothing you can do about it. Don't try to win them. You can't convince them. Don't waste your time doing it. This whole broadcast right here is to hopefully try to help recover those who are somewhat on the fence and really truly don't know. You get to hear it straight from us. You get to hear it straight from the recording itself. 
again, by their fruits, you shall know them. Now, what is it going to have? What is it going to be with all you people out there that forsake the fellowship of the assembly and it's become your mannerism? Mm. What's going to become of all you people? You islands to yourself. You don't need no man. Uh, the book says, obey them to have a rule over you and submit yourself, or they watch for your soul and they must give an account. So what are you going to do? Just throw away that word? The book says, all that believe were together and had all things common. What are you going to do? Just throw away that word? I'm telling y'all, many of y'all playing around with your souls and you're on the wrong side of the fence. It's the same. It's, it's a really a shame. It really is. So I'll give Pastor Muir and Pastor Corey the last word. I'm done. What y'all got? Praise y'all. Hopefully, like Pastor said, that y'all got some clarity tonight. I know one thing. We got too much work. We are coming up. The, the weather is breaking. It's starting to get warm outside. And guess what you're going to see from straightway? You think we're going to be sitting around here making videos? You know what you're going to see from straightway? We're going to be building and building and building and building for the saints of the most high Yah. So when you got people that say, oh, what does building have to do? Uh, what was the comment earlier? You said it's carnal or something. Carnal, building. Yeah, building is carnal. It wouldn't be carnal if you had a house debt free. You see? That... The saints built and you'd be around the saints. So at the end of the day, that's what we're going to do. We're going to get about our father's business and we're going to continue to work. We're going to continue to live holy and we're going to continue to live peacefully. That's what we're going to continue to do. In the name of Jesus Messiah, you're going to continue to see the fruit, much fruit come from this ministry like it always has and like it will continue to do in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Um, you know, I, I just pray again, you know, like all the other pastors said, that you really take to heart what's going on. You know, because when I look at the underlying aspects of what Pastor Charles Dow has done in following the book and really being instrumental, I, I see a, a, a set apart generation on the horizon, you know, in the midst of this wicked and perverse generation. That's exactly what's taking place. And so all of this goes together hand and foot because definitely a lot of you all in the comments, my question would be to you, when have you done and spoken of the wonderful works of Elohim and people have seen that demonstrated from you? And then not only that, but then where can they come and be able to continue to experience that because that place have been set apart so that the most high Yah name can be glorified and not mixed in with any heathenism, any paganism, any idolatry, all of these things that you see. My every day I know my children are free from this LGBTQZWY agenda every single day. And I can go to other places where I know my children are free from those agendas because that's what the most high want us to do. How else is you going to, you know, come out from among them and be ye separate? How else? Explain that. You can't explain it because you don't have that type of deal on your mind. Going to have Shavo in a park ain't set apart. Having Shavo Pentecost in a strip club, like we didn't hear heard from some of these other <laughs> organizations. It ain't that ain't set apart. I think about that. It just don't make sense. And so when I see people coming up against what we doing, I welcome it, man. Just keep on talking. The more you talk, the more y'all gonna bless us. He gonna bless them that bless us. He gonna curse them that curse us. Man, y'all keep on doing what you do because it don't stop. People still calling. People still desiring healing. People are still applauding the work that's going on. People are still praising the Most High God, despite of the hundred some hours that's been put together by Ringo TV. People are still glorifying Yah based on what they are seeing and what they know they see Yah doing through this ministry. So, case closed. 
done. Hey, I want everybody out there, instead of questioning us, I want y'all to question Ringo TV and New Breed. Show us your fruit. Show us what you're doing. It's easy for you to point the finger and talk about everybody else. As the old saying go, it's easy to get on, but it's hard to get off. Show everybody your fruit. And if you can't do it, then all you're going to do in your silence is going to show everybody the damn devil your ass really is. You damn satanic ass shits. Ah. That's that's good. The man fruit. We want to see fruit. Yeah. Show us the not, fruit. Not not questionable suspect music videos mm. that are cringy. <laughs> and cut your damn hair, Adonis. <laughs> I bet you it ain't gonna be no seven hour video. <laughs> no, not for no fruit. All right. <laughs> well, it's definitely an awesome show. I'm sure this this is just gonna set the the uh, YouTube on fire even more, and 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 really get these these uh, as as they call themselves and their name correctly content. Creators, that's what they are. They create content. Us, we create homes. We 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 help create uh, with spiritual growth. You name it. But you'll know them by their fruits. Hopefully, um, you brothers and you sisters that are watching this, who have ears to hear and eyes to see. Hopefully, y'all have saw something. I see there are a lot of people watching, but there were a ton of uh, trolls in here. I, I know the administrators were very busy early on deleting them out. But um, hey, we like I said, we did this for you brothers and sisters who have ears to hear and eyes to see. So anyway, with that said, definitely share this. I already know it's going to get straight back to whoever might need to see it. Um, and with that said, you are watching Ask the Elect on Hold Fast Wednesday. I'm Michael Israel. You are listening to Pastor Dow, pa uh, Pastor Corey, and Pastor Mir. And with that said, shalom, shalom. Brother, that's your joy.